I feel like reading your show. Right, we're live. Right, so hopefully when some we can see that the trick is when you know you're live is when people start sending comments. So for a moment, it might just feel like we're here by ourselves. But it doesn't matter because we're going to carry on regardless. And then hopefully we'll just take a minute to just start filtering through. And then we know that like <clears throat> we're not on our own. But you know what? Even if we are only on our own, it doesn't matter. We're going to no. catch jokes. Right. All the time, all the time. And it's, it's recorded so everyone can go check in the jokes afterwards. Exactly, exactly. There you go, there you go. So just for context of this before I do my little something, um, just so people can start to see and understand, the, I guess, the context of the experiences that we're going to talk about. Oh, the comments yeah. are coming in. Oh, they're coming. Hey, guys. Hey, Rue. Hey, Abigail. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Rue. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hi, Constance. Hey, all... Hi, Constance. Yeah, they're all coming. <laughs> right, okay, stop this now, because we ain't, we, ain't, we ain't doing this oh, for the whole session. We're, we're not doing this for the whole session. No, no. So we're not, we're not going to do that. User. <laughs> so, um, Leanne, do you want to just give, like, two, 60 seconds your, I guess, help people understand your background in terms of the professional sphere so that can give some context as some of your experiences and then Abby you can do the same thing and then I'll do my little thing and then we can we can go yeah of course of course so um since 2007 I've basically worked in asset management in different in different departments um but always with people clients in mind from um in a varying spectrum so in that case as we all know finance can be a very very white industry and usually the exposure you get to your other black colleagues unfortunately can usually be that they're not in a similar position to you and the more senior you get the less black faces you tend to see and hopefully with these kinds of conversations I hope to be able to be looking to my left and my right and seeing more black faces so that's me asset management asset management <laughs> So, yeah, so I come from um, talent acquisition, recruitment, um, HR background. Um, and the reason why I got into that is because I was just really fed up about never seeing people like myself. You know, representation was really important. When you don't see people who look like you, then you tend to think, well, you might, there's a problem, you know, or you have a problem. And after seeing really bad behaviours from um, recruiters um, and I have to say HR professionals as well. I was, you know, I said, you know, I want to really break the mold and I want to get in and make sure that, you know, our, we don't remain, you know, underrepresented and marginalized groups don't remain invisible and don't remain unheard. Um, so I've been doing that for the past um, five years, but also more, more and more now doing anti-racism um, and allyship training um, and, you know, well, helping people understand why we are where we are now in regards to systemic racism and oppression and why we all need to be on the right side of history, really. So that, that's me. <laughs> fab, fab. Right, so just for the benefit of people who are tuning in, <clears throat> because this is the well-behaved Shireen, Leanne and Abby that you're going to get for all of five minutes because when we start talking, it's going to go crazy. <laughs> so you might, you might want to just... Be clear on adjusting the volume because at some point we might get a little bit loud and rowdy. So that's point one. Point two, we will talk over each other. It's not a sign of disrespect. That's just how we like to hype and gas each other up. So again, just I will do my best to moderate if I feel like we're getting too out of hand. But th there's going to be a lots of remnant agreeing with some of the stuff that we're talking about. So you might just, you know, just you might just need to be ready. And um, I guess, you know, I don't need to talk about my background, but you know I'm I'm in HR, but you know I'm focused about just trying to open up the conversations in all four corners of the world, in all four corners of professions and experiences, so we can really start to address the root causes of why Black people just don't have the same opportunities as everybody else. But rather than just going, here's the reasons why we don't have the opportunities, it's for white people who are in positions of leadership and power and influence to understand that this is now the time that they have to step up and do the work and understand the context so they can see how they can influence within their businesses because that's my background that's what i know do you know what mm -hmm. i mean so that's my focus um so you know and one of the things that i always say like you know to be black right you know when you have those moments when you just wish you could just be like skanking into the office do you know what i mean and just <laughs> you know when you just think to yourself yeah you know what let me just like 
let me just like let just let people know what's <laughs> going on and you know and I think that's just so important but and it's, and it's it, right but you can't though and that's why we're here we're here because we can't because we we have to it's very difficult to rock up to work black and ex and to do your day job well because we have to wear a mask you know we have to come mm. as somebody else because we're not allowed to be authentic we're not allowed to show mm. our true self because we're you mm. know we don't know how people are going to take us you know and why should we have to have an out of body experience to be expect to be accepted in the workplace why do we have to do that no one else has to do that not even i have to say not even black men but black women are under hell. I keep saying it, and I know people think I'm being dramatic, but you know, we are the least respected, the least promoted, the least like paid well, you know, we, we you know, we're not compensated well, and we're having to work you know, one million times harder just to take, you know, three measly steps forward. And that's even if there's not so many shields surrounding us. Why do we have to do that? It's so tiring. I'm so tired. I'm tired mm. of having to wave a white flag and just be like, oh, I surrender. I'm having, I'm tired of surrendering and giving in. Why do we have to do that? And do you know what I mean? And this is the, just, I'm, I'm just going to do a little two, this is two minutes, right? Because you, you, will, you will thank me for this. But you know what? Just sometimes when you just feel like you just want to step into the office. <laughs> Wait, cause I gotta wait for the bass line to drop. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> but you know something? This is me personified driving to work. This is me driving, like, before I drive before I drive to work, there's a U-turn, the traffic lights, my mu I do my last little shimmy, the music goes down, and I turn the corner, and then I drive into the car park. And then it... That's the thing. That's the... Look at people, I like, pump it up. Yes, listen. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, yes. you, know, you know what? Like, some people don't realise, Extra is my middle name. Do you know what I mean? I've, really, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All of her middle names, life. Abby. All of her middle names. All oh. of her middle names. Not just the one. Not just the one. Oh, brilliant. But you know what? And this this is the thing. And you know what? The the beautiful thing is like what we're doing now is 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 so important for so many reasons because I feel like you you know I keep saying this I center myself in all of this stuff that I'm doing I'm not waiting for anybody to give me permission I'm not waiting for anybody to give me a platform you know Abby you ain't waiting for anybody to um step aside Leanne you ain't waiting now we're here right we are centering ourselves <laughs> someone right said, someone said it's called you battle already <laughs> 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 More than likely. <laughs> listen, it's true. Do you know, you know, listen, do you know how many times Doneo don't know, right? How he got me through stuff. Because do you know how many times oh. I used to play that tune? Because you know when you're gonna go into the office and you know there's gonna be some bullshit, right? And you know when you just feel like you just you just gotta come with your stick in your hand ready. Like literally, that is how it feels sometimes to come into the office because you know, like you need to you need to shed your blackness. Do you know what I mean? You can't be stepping in doing the migraine skank, right? And then, because you know how you do, right? Because we're like this with the headphones, yeah, because we're on the tube or we're on the train or whatever, mm. and you step into the office and then somebody's like, oh, hi, how was your weekend? And you're like, oh yeah, it was fabulous, thank you. Do you know what I mean? You, and and all of a sudden, that's like, this, this is, it's the step, isn't it? That's the bit where we go, right, we have to leave that behind, right? Because yeah. then we step into the office, and you, we need to know that our hair looks needs to be on point. We we the way our phrasing, do you know what I mean? Has to be everything. You know, everything changes from the moment you step, you step into the into the workplace. The moment you step, and we into, police oh, ourselves. Into, yeah, we police yeah. ourselves because it's almost that part of, you know, you always have to smile even in those moments that you know you might be vexed for whatever reason. It might be not work related. Exactly. And you walk into the office and you just you just in one because you see other colleagues, they come in, slam down bag, da da da. Everyone just leaves them alone. But as a black person, you have to go in and you have to be like, morning. Even well, if, if you your face, like if your face is morning. not fixed up, if your face is not fixed up, do you know what they say to you? Oh, 
who got out of the wrong side of the bed this morning? Why is it? Why don't you smile? Do you know what? That's the word. Oh my God. Do you know how many times people used to say that to me? Why don't you smile? Oh my God. And I'd just be like, but, but, but they're not saying that to everybody. You're no, not saying no. that to everybody. No, but you know why? It's because because we're black women, and because you know our skin is a weapon, and it's because I'm. And, and again, you know, this show is for us to be completely honest, and it's a. Yes. You know, I will sit next to. Um, and this is not. This is a. Uh, I'm, I'm making up a name. This is not anyone I've worked with. But I will sit next to a Sarah Smith, and a Sarah Smith is allowed to be aggy. She's allowed to 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 mash up the toaster in the morning. You know, she's allowed to. <laughs> she's allowed to dash your fork in. Dash your fork into the sink, yeah? I have to be like, ooh, I have to, ooh, ooh, let me do this. I mean, because I don't want anyone to turn around and say, oh, Abby, you're, and you talk, people have said, oh, Abby, you're a little bit scary this morning. I'm Listen, and it's also, it is that how you feel emotionally is always translated into your professional capability. Mm -hmm. And that's what I don't like. I don't like that if you're having an off day for whatever reason, yeah. then you're told in, and that's happened to me once, that I was told in my review that sometimes it seems like I have an attitude problem where I was like, no, I don't have an attitude problem at all. Um, I had a bad day. I had one bad day and I showed it in the office. And this is what's happening to me in a professional review, which yeah. is no way reflective of the yeah. standard of my work. And that's the chance that we don't get when we're yeah. black. We so all, everything is tied to our capability. That's the privileges that's the that we don't have. You know, um, yeah, I completely mirror that, Leanne. I, um, in one of my roles, um, so there was a very aggy woman. She she happened to be white, but she was just aggy. She was aggy with everybody. Didn't, didn't matter, you know, black, white, whatever. She was aggy, and she was aggy over emails. And she, um, you know, I just, I just, I just remember thinking, if that was me, I'd be called a scary Mary. But anyway, mm -hmm. I was um, because I, as a recruiter, I was recruiting for her team, and I had sent, I kid you not, maybe about twenty emails, lovely emails, or. I really need um, your help. I need your input in this. What do you think about this candidate? Could you give me feedback as to why this candidate's not, you know, isn't isn't a culture fit? You know, could you get, you know, which is all nonsense. But anyway, there was one particular email I had sent after I had high, I had um, interviewed or put so I don't know maybe six amazing candidates in front of her, and she was I was chasing her, chasing her. She didn't reply back. So sent an email and actually kept this email because of the reply I received back. I kept it sent an email saying, um, you know, CC'd in uh, the MDs because they were all asking me, Abby, what's going on with the candidates? What's going on? No, because it's, then it was becoming my problem. They weren't, they weren't facing her who I was waiting on. It was becoming Abby's problem. Abby's not doing her due diligence as a recruiter. So I sent a quick message saying, hey, X, um, um, could you just let me know exactly why this candidate isn't right for the role? Otherwise, I'm, I'm lost as to the kind of person that we're looking for and the brief then doesn't make sense. That was it, you know? Really nice, best wishes, Abby. The the C the MDs come back from a trip abroad and in my review sat opposite me and said, um, you know, Abby, I know that you're trying very hard not to adhere to certain stereotypes, but when you send emails like this, it is a bit angry black woman. Off that's exactly what you said to me. And that's the problem anyway. because you know, and you know what happens is like this is this is this is gaslighting, right? It is gaslighting. And, it's the gaslighting, but also it's the things that deny us our ability to feel the way we feel. Because when we do feel that way, it's two plus two equals ten, mm. right? And then we get told we have to mm -hmm. try. And I had this, um, you know, there was a situation in a, a few businesses ago, right, where there was an individual who was basically doing drugs, sexually harassing his team, right, and. The um, the employees, the women, basically came together to put you know put in put in a grievance. Right, I had to read a script, a suspension script. But hear the cry now, because he felt scared and threatened and intimidated because of the way that I read the script. They didn't check no. him. They they protected him, even though we had CCTV proof. Listen, when I tell you the facts were lined up, right. So this was this was like a slam dunk. This should have been the easiest process, the easiest process to follow, to protect him. And because they were worried about how it would look, guess who they stepped to, and told me that I had to step aside from the HR issue because what was the word? I might um, conflict of interest. 
quote unquote, I know, Shireen, you can't help the way you are, but you have to understand that some people can find you a little bit t intimidating. Or because I read a script. Listen, I wasn't even freestyling because I really wanted to lick down the man, but I did lick him down. <laughs> All I did, you know, you know when people say, what? Listen. If I was, if I, if I licked him, then I would have said, okay, but I didn't. All I did was read the script, mm. and then because he didn't like my tone of voice, or probably because I stood with my shoulders back, or when I sit down because I just you want know, it. Heaven forbid, heaven forbid, a black woman stands with stands and stands sure of themselves. Heaven forbid, heaven forbid, a black woman is is is. Is, is feeling good about herself and feeling good about how far she's come. Heaven forbid, because you know they would not question a white man, a white, a white cisgender um, heterosexual man who has all the privileges, who's privately educated, who you know was born with a silver spoon. You wouldn't check someone like that. But you would check, you know, it's easier to police people like myself. Do you know how many times, and I'm sure it's exactly for you ladies, how many times I've had to, I've had to, read my emails over and over again before I press the send button. Because I know the moment I press send on an email, I know I'm getting dragged into something. Someone's gonna call me scary. Someone's gonna call me ag aggressive. Someone's mm. going to call me arrogant. Someone's going to call me like, you know, they're gonna call me loaded words. But you know, so what, Joe, Bloggs, Joe Bloggs is allowed to send out exactly the same email. But the moment a black woman does, do you know how many times my emails have been policed, have been policed by people? It's just, it's, it, Listen, and, you know, and, this, got, and, this, and this is the thing, sorry, Leanne, you go, you go. No, I was just going to say, the thing that burns me the most is that black women aren't allowed to be multidimensional. We can only be the caricatures that they imagine us to be. First of Indeed. all, they don't have any black people, right? Yeah. First of all, they don't have any black people yeah. in their in their friendship group, whatever. So a black yeah. woman is either sexual, she's bubbly, she can dance. Yeah. She's aggressive and she's angry, but to be to be intelligent, articulate, well-rounded, well-read, yeah. well-educated, travelled, um, all those things to know how to comport herself, to know how to deliver, to know how to write emails. No, 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 no. Exactly. It's no amazing. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Colleagues to send. Yes. And they don't get any policing, but the same one, Madam here gets a... Was that was that really needed? Do you know what is really funny? No, all these people that can't see color, they all of a sudden see color at the Christmas party or the summer party when they want to. Well, they want me on the dance floor. All of a sudden. Oh my god! Oh my god! Abby! Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Ah, Abby! Abby! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it. Stop it. Oh, you're you're all right. Right. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something because when it's a wet right, so his, his I mean, I can't, I can dance, so I'm not even gonna lie. I'm, 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 me, I'm me, too. <laughs> me too, right? Real. But let me tell you something when it comes, right? And so you've got people that don't look at you twice in the office, yeah? Christmas party come and listen, and you know, everyone's standing, everyone's standing around doing the two step, right? And you know, <laughs> you know what? Everyone's standing around doing the two step. And you know, if you're fortunate enough to be in the business where there's maybe one or two black people, or dare I say, there's one or two people of the culture, you know, other minorities, because you know we all get together, don't we, right? Yeah, yeah, we and do. then, right, so then what happens is one of us says, let's go to the DJ and see if he can drop a track, right? Because you know, we're thinking to ourselves, if we've got to come to this dry biscuit Christmas party, they better, they better play local tune, right? So then everyone not got nothing to say, right? So then the DJ might drop a little track, which is like Rihanna, not even Rude Boy, because that's too much. But you know the comment we've like seen. Oh, little, nah, nah. Nah, nah, nah. You know, oh, nah, nah. nah. Some, safe, some safe. But I'm going, I could do with some vibes cartel. Can you give me some? Like, what? <laughs> EXO, EXO. My love is very special. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Look at the vibes. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm thinking like, listen, I'm thinking like, and I'll never forget, like, um, I, I don't think he's watching, but somebody who is in my team, right? I'm not even going to say, but you're going to know. So me and another girl in my team, we were like, listen, it would be wicked if they just played this tune. Wicked if they just played this tune. Yeah. Do you know what he said? Mm. The DJ ain't playing that tune because you two are not dropping it on the dance floor. And no words of a lie. No, 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 no words of a lie. Because he knew, because you've got everybody else waiting. You've got mm. all these other... um 
directors, all these other heads of department, all these other people that don't say nothing to you in the office, but want to come talk to you about your, your moves. Oh, you're so good at dancing, aren't you? Oh, you're afraid. I've never known a black person that can't dance. I've never known a black person, you know. It's in the jeans. It's in the jeans. It's in the jeans. It's in the Now, to be oh, clear, it's not in yeah. our jeans to get paid well, no? Or it's not in our oh. jeans to run off our oh. money. Or it's not oh. in our jeans to promote oh. us. Or it's in our jeans oh. to see what we can do on the dance floor. Please don't waste my time. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm saying. Listen, this is what I'm saying to you. So that's all right then. That's all right then. Because when you're going to come and you want to see us being in our black space, no, you know what I mean? We can be entertainers. We can be entertainers. We can, we can skank, you can shake your batty, yeah. whatever. But you can't sit in the boardroom. When it comes to twerking, all the Sarah Smiths want to line up next to me at the Christmas party. Why are you? What, what, when I, when I'm, people, I'm like, why, why are you all so close to me? What's going on with your backsides? I don't know what, I don't, please just. But that's the point. And this is where, and this is, you know, all of this, because everyone's thinking that we're just we're just gassing ourselves up for no reason. But th there's a point to this. There's a point to this because this is the double standard, and this is about providing we hold our position, right? So providing we hold our position yeah. as the people who are athletes whether we're into music, whether yep. we're, we're, we're sports stars, whether yep. you know, we're, we're into the urban scene, right? Yep. That and, and, and dare I say, people can either be entertained or make money off the back of that. That's yep. fine, right? Yes. But the same thing that you applaud because you're watching the television, you're, you're going to the nightclubs and you're seeing, you don't exactly. want that at the office. Exactly. Because all of a sudden now, you just want, dare I say, you want the good Negro, Right, who you can come with any sort of foolishness with, yeah. and we have we are expected to sit and accept it because the second that we step out of that box, we are pushed back in. Not because somebody says, "Oh, you're getting out of," because we're gaslighted then, and then we're told that you're making this about race when it's got nothing to do with race, and then you're told, "Well, do you know what? If you That's just not like, reminding us where our place is, it's like please don't don't step, above, don't step above your station," you know. And that's what it is. Back here. And but, another thing is our culture, our, the, the, the black culture fundamentally has also been on a on a larger scale, black music, black culture has been bastardized and commercialized yeah. in a way that yeah. people now think that it's something you subscribe to. Yeah. You know, I'm into. I saw one of the comments saying, you know, they're not allowed to play hip hop um at, at, at the Christmas party. Yeah, I'm into hip hop, I'm into blues, I'm into jazz. Well, that's all well and good, but do you know the history of this kind of music? Yeah. It's more than a movement. It's more than a T-shirt. It's more than Run DMC wearing Adidas. It's mm. it's more, 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 more. This isn't just what this isn't just what people do and what people did to get attention and to make money. This was an expression of art, of pain, of frustration, of police brutality. It it's had going, meaning. It wasn't. It wasn't Iggy Azalea coming now with her. Oh, it, wasn't any, it wasn't any oh, of God, that. You did not say Iggy. <laughs> right. <laughs> but oh it, was, it was people feeling, feeling, feels, feeling completely brutalized, feeling sad, feeling marginalized, everything. This was what this movement came out of. It's been made into money, it's been made fashionable, but people live and breathe this life. So when you're making it into a thing, oh yeah, I think hip hop's cool. Well, good for you. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, because yeah. because what people what people don't realize, and this is the difference: if you're white and enjoying the culture, when you've had enough of the culture, you can turn it off and you go back to living exactly. your privileged life. Exactly. Right? And that's what when exactly. you're when you're in the culture, as you said, Leanne, because for for a lot of people, listen, we don't. Let, let's go to Jamaica and talk about the dance floor movement before Sean Paul became Sean Paul, and that was their way, just like how sport. Do you know what I mean? That was like our way, our culture's way of coming yep. out of yep. our background. It yep. was a necessity. So you know this whole thing about, oh, and somebody I was talking to, um, I did a panel with this amazing young lady and she said, absolutely right. She said, you know when people say, oh, Jamaica breeds the best sports, the best runners, the fastest runners. Well, guess what, right? You can run for free 
in Jamaica because you don't need to pay money for equipment, right? You can play football good. All you need to do is kick a ball and you get it. So, of course, if that's what you have access to in those communities, mm -hmm. guess what happens if you do something all day, every day? You get good. I'm not knocking and saying that it's not that they're good, but you know when people start to talk about, oh, yeah, but it's like, you know, you black people, you're good at... Oh, black people, or black people don't know how to swim as well oh. as, as white people. I wanted to sorry just because where we were on the subject, and I, I wanted to go back to the the yes, Christmas party, the Christmas party, and um, summer party thing. I have to say, a lot of um, white colleagues, in particular, that I have dealt with in the past, they get very, very brave when they have some liquor in their system. And I want to talk about how um, black women's bodies are um, whew, black, how, like how they're fetishized. Out how black women's bodies are fetishized. Now, <laughs> this whole, you know, I can't change that I have big boobs. I, I can say that about myself. I can't change that I have big boobs. I cannot change that I have a backside. There's nothing I can do about that. And I, I <laughs> there was a particular Christmas party when um, a white guy, a white colleague came up to me and said to me, um, you know, I have never been with a black girl. Oh my God! So oh, I'm here. Oh, I'm here. Oh, I'm Abby, like, oh Abby, God. wait, Abby, wait! Don't even, don't even, because let me just, don't even, don't even, because let me just chip in with my thing before you can carry on. If I had a twenty pound note, right? Yeah, exactly. Every, you know what it is. Can we just, because this is connected? Let's go to this. What I call the the white British pub culture, right? So the fact that you have to go to the pub and sit and listen to the foolishness to demonstrate that you're part of the team because when you don't come, listen, I, I don't drink. When you don't come, they're out there talking about promotions and trying to kick you out of the business when you don't go and drink with them. You know, I, and funny enough, you good. This is one thing. I don't drink alcohol. I actually don't drink alcohol. So a lot of the times I have to drag myself to go to the pub because I'm like, I don't want to be here, innit? No. I don't want to be here. No. And then, and, but then you get told when you don't go exactly. that you're standoffish, that you're sometimeish, that you know you're not part of the team, and 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 then when you do go, right? And then everybody, because you're sitting there, you're thinking, I ain't having a lick of alcohol. Let me just sit here and mind my own business. And you're what you but you know with. what? I love it when they start drinking because that's when they start telling me the truth, Sheree. Yeah, but Abby, but Abby, when they tell you the truth though, yeah. and when other senior people hear it, I've had people have a little bit too much to drink and call me the n word right and you 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 n people right i've had people have too much to drink and start telling me as you said that whole, and they come close to you in your space and start saying how they've never been with a black woman and is it true when you go black you never go back and all of one, that and one one accidentally we're gonna go with accidentally because he apologized one accidentally brushed past my breasts with both hands with both hands. Yeah, because that's how you do. That's yes. how you're doing it. Accident. 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 With both hands. But you, and I was, but you I, know the other thing, to your point, Abby, um, to your point, Abby, it's I'm saying about the culture and being able to dip in and out. You know, most of these guys would have had a hip hop phase especially in our generation, whether it was at university or a little bit before they were into the whole hip hop thing. So all the women that they were looking at were these hip hop mavens that were on there. They never did anything with it. So when they get into the office now and they see a black woman and it's all pop culture and it's a few drinks, it's like, well, do you know what? When I was 19, I really wish I could have had a girl like you, but, uh, oh. <laughs> oh. and then you're just like, really? And I just want to say one thing because I can see some of the comments, you know, because listen, I know, this is, this is the importance. Let me just go back to the importance of having these conversations because for anybody who's listening or watching, right, and you're listening to some of the things we're saying and you're thinking to yourself, there is no yeah. fucking way this happens yeah, yeah. in the workplace, right? Mm. And you are hearing how normal it is. In fact, we got so many stories, we're tripping up. We, the, the, yeah, we can't yeah. even, I, I yeah. wish we could, we could just, there are so many stories that we have. Yeah. And let me just also be clear, this is just as black women. If I had three black men yeah. next to me, let's go and see how them stories would run because they yeah. get the other side of it. They yeah. get that, is it true what they say about black men? Black men. Um, yeah. You know, but, all, all but of they're that not even being thing. invited to the pub. They're not no. even being invited to the pub anyway. My, my dad, sorry, my dad is a cabbie, a uh, black cabbie, and he is... Um, <laughs> The amount of times women have 
been on the liquor and they have said that to him or they've tried oh, to sexually harass my poor dad who's just trying to get them from A to B um, and saying, is it true about black men? Is it true? And I'm thinking, my mum will light you up. People better stay the hell away from my dad because she, <laughs> she will burn you to the ground. <laughs> it's not the one, but... Because your, your mum's not here to play, Abby. Your mum's not here to play. No, 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 no. Um, and so it, it's not just the workplace, but this is how comfortable, as you're saying, Sheree, how comfortable and how normalised it is for just, just to say this kind of nonsense to us, you know? Yeah, it's, and, it's, and it's exactly the thing where, you know when... You know, it's really difficult to try and get people to understand in an hour, 45 minutes, half an hour, yeah, what yeah. the lived experience, experience is. is. Do you know what I mean? And, and I, like, I, I, I wish that we didn't have to lay out on the table some of the complete foolishness that we have to deal with on a day to day. But we're doing it because I want to prove a point. So for those people who want to sit here and go, oh, do you know what? You know, we don't. Why is it that we don't have black people in our business, or why is it when we do have one or two black people, they don't stay and they don't leave? Right? Go at us, play back some of these conversations, yeah. and understand every single thing that we've all said yeah. that we have experienced in. And let me tell you this: every single business I have worked in. Let me go and tell you. Just, just, just because, just because I don't lead with that and don't put that on the table just because i don't let because it and to some extent this is where i feel so strongly that things need to change because we have internalized that to the point that it is so normal mm -hmm. we can have this the three of us can have this conversation with like i don't know how many people are watching maybe like 15 or whatever people are watching and we are not even batting an eyelid in terms of just being able to run off the examples mm -hmm. like and 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 we barely touched the surface because that is our experience mm -hmm. and i know there are going to be other people listening to this and they're going but this can never happen in our business and i'm going to go yes it has happened i guarantee you it has happened to some degree in your business but the worst thing for me is not that it's happened it's when people are aware, whether they're senior or not senior, and they've turned a blind eye. Because let's talk about that for a second. Yes. Because before everyone starts yes. going, well, you know, Johnny, who got a bit handsy in the pub, is out of order. Well, let me tell you, Johnny wasn't on his own because he had four other people in his yeah. department yeah. who were stood right next to him and yeah. did CFA. Yeah. Or when Sally in accounts, I don't know a Sally in accounts, by the way, so that's just a made-up yeah. name. But when Sally in accounts, yeah wants to start brushing past a black man's crotch, yeah. right? And yeah. she stood with four or five of her colleagues and they are all laughing and giggling in the same way, going, what? I mean, I've worked with right. HR people where when a, a man has said to me, like, wow, Abby, you've got, you know, really nice blowjob lips, legit, in a workplace. This has happened to me in the workplace. And can I just stress no. for everyone who's listening, this has happened to me within the last three years. Oh. Yeah. <gasps> And in that, yes, this is not this is within the last three years, telling me that I have blowjob lips. And HR was there. And HR said, to, yep, HR was there. And HR was just like, I mean, take it as a compliment. Oh, why? A compliment. Why should I take it as a compliment? Why? It's not a compliment. And but, I'm thinking, but, and, but, but, you know what that is, though, Abby? That whole thing about we should be grateful for the attention. Exactly. Isn't Correct. it? Correct. This, this, this whole thing, and that's this we're bit not, about... We're not, we're not beautiful enough. Oh, you know, black women are not beautiful enough. You know what? You're getting some kind of attention. So it might Best, be... Don't forget, don't, don't forget, we're exactly. sexual deviants and sexual fiends. Yes. So, of course, um, a compliment from us, the highest compliment that a black woman can ever obviously receive is a sexual compliment because that's what we live for. Deep down, yeah. that's all we're good at. So yes. that's what we live for. Yeah. And back to your point also, Shireen, about Johnny at the pub. Yeah. Well, Johnny at the pub is Johnny at the pub, but when Johnny in the office is some sort of director and you're yeah. maybe an assistant, then yeah. you can bring it, you can bring really it to work. Yes. But, you know, I've, I've heard of, it wasn't, it didn't involve me, but I've heard of situations yeah. where junior people have flirted with married older people and it's the junior person who got caught up to be like, you need to stop flirting with this man. That, listen, let me just let me just go. I just want to talk about this for this for a minute, because yes, there are. I'm not excusing this. There are some ridiculous, appalling behaviours that happen. What I call at grassroots level, right? Mm -hmm. all, listen, every company 
in every person in some company at some point recognizes you know that one person that nobody wants to be nobody wants to have too many drinks around that one yeah. person that you don't want to be in an office with by yourself listen we all have it we all and everyone's like no 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 and you know and you know as women this is not even a black thing. This is like yeah. as women, you know, we go this yeah. thing like code. If you see me touch my, if you see me touch the side of my afro, right, you best come and you best come quick, right? So we we got all these codes to like don't don't put us in these situations. But the thing that that um, I feel like has to be tackled, and I always keep saying this, do, 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 it's the top of the triangle. It is Correct. the top of the triangle because it is these individuals that basically hold all the power as to how far we succeed in the office why does people think me too was a was it was it was a thing and for all the, the all the the men and the women that were saying all of these actresses i mean they could have just said no they could have just they could have said and what i keep saying to people is you've got to understand the power dynamics with this right mm -hmm. you've got to understand the power dynamics and as black people when people say like why don't you just why don't you just leave why don't you just why don't where are we going to go because this is structural and this happens in every every business and, and where, also, are where are we going where are we going you're absolutely right and also you know off the back of the, the conversation i had where i said a a CEO said to me, me, the only black employee, I was the only black employee. And of course I was the only black woman. When he looked oh. me in my eyes and told me that I had no value. And he told, he said it, he said, you have no value. You have no worth, Abby, you have no value here. And, you know, and people, you know, yes. Now, of course I can stand up for myself. But at the time I'm thinking, I need to be able to eat at the end of the month. I need to be able to keep the lights on. I need to be able to feed myself. I need to be able to, I need mm. to pay my bills. And you get into this point where we're like, we can't stand up for ourselves because ultimately we know we are the underdog. We know that Joe Bloggs, whatever happens to him, he's going to become the CEO or the MD of another company. Because when we open up the newspaper, then we see his face and we're like, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. And I think that's this whole thing about, you know, me, I'm in a privileged position right now, which means if anyone wants to come and step to me, I can stand up and I can say, you know what? No, no, no. Yes. I go back to parts of my career Yes. Even in very senior positions. I mean, if I've, I've got two kids, right? Mm -hmm. I've got my partner, I've got a house, I've got a mortgage where I've got to live. And as a black person, we are also acutely aware that we don't have the opportunities that other people have. 100%. So unfortunately, we stay quiet and we put up with it. That is why there are so many black people right now who are dealing with a lot of pent up feelings about racism. Yeah over and the covert stuff because we have kidded ourselves for years that by internalizing it and, and, and not standing up for ourselves that is part and parcel of what it is to live our life and what i'm saying with every single thing that i post and i you know i'm like giving people headache on linkedin they're just like trying to follow me for every person that unfollows me there's five people that can follow me because they're thinking as they're thinking, she's got to shut up is because what i'm saying is why should that be our lived experience? Why, why, why should that be our lived experience when that was my mum's lived experience, when that exactly. was my parents' lived experience? Mm. And not just because we're here in the UK, whether we've got family in the US, whether we've got family in Canada, in the Caribbean, Jamaica, which is where my mum is from. Why is it, why is it that as black people, we cannot get everyone else to understand that we are second class citizens in every way, shape or form, in every way, shape or form. And when people say to me like, yeah, but you know, you're talking about the workplace machine, but that ain't really where the big issues are, it's in society. And then I'll just, what, what now I'm gonna do is just run them this conversation, run them the first part of this conversation and say, listen, this is what happens in organizations. And there might be some leaders who genuinely feel like I didn't know this was going on, but let me mm. tell you, there are HR people out there who know there's been cases and they have been aware of instances that are racist, of discrimination, of sexual harassment, of any sort of harassment. And, you know, there are some gatekeepers who've just closed the door, so you don't even see the light of day. But then there are others who've gone, this is not right. So they've taken it up to the next level. They've spoken to the directors and the directors have basically exercised their power and said, well, you need to make this go away. And guess how that does? If you're senior enough, it's a settlement agreement, because I don't know, because I've written them. Do you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? 
and you get the lawyers involved and then off they go. But every time we do this, what I'm trying to say to people, every time we're bystanders, every time we leave because it's it's not good enough, we allow that behaviour and that culture to keep circulating. Oh, we're perpetuating it. it. That's exactly and, what and, we're doing. And, and, but, but the other point to the, as you said, Abby, before about, you know, you want to eat. But I think the, the other point about it is, is that when we go into a workplace, especially if you're either one of very few black people or the only black woman, you feel like you're carrying the weight of black people on your shoulders. So you don't want to be, you know, I know loads of other people who have gone from company to company, court case to court case, and still get jobs every single time. But we also know that as a black person, if you have something, a, get a check against your name that says that you took any sort of employer to court, you feel that you, first of all, you're not going to get another job. But secondarily, that any black person that may have had that really minuscule chance behind you then has none. And I think that's the duality that we all fight to say, do I complain and it's just for the benefit of me? Or do I just suck it up so that somebody else maybe can get into get through the door if I'm sitting in an interviewing position exactly. or if I can give somebody a reference or if I can mentor somebody oh. who's decided they want to come here. And mm -hmm. I think that's the that's the that's the divide that we always have where it's like yeah. what there's my intrinsic value as a person for me as Leanne, but then there is also my greater value as being somebody, a black person contributing yeah. to black society and yeah. giving somebody a spot, a space next to me within the corporate space. And that's yeah. always gonna be our fight until they take, until they give us, in, well, no, 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 not give us, until we push them and we make space for other people because otherwise we're always gonna have this problem that we're not gonna be able to, I don't know, balance our conscience somehow. Um, and you and you always think of people coming after you as as yeah. opposed to, you know, think of think of all of our parents, first generation, second generation here, who experience being called the N-word, experience having to fight, experience, you know, having good jobs in the Caribbean but not being able to deliver bread in this country, couldn't get mortgages, had to have, you know, all these things that are four parents have experienced so that we now have the freedoms to be able to go to university, to be able to mm. even work in these corporates, mm. to be able to have this platform right now. So mm. it's it's such a difficult situation when you're there in the moment because yeah. you do think of the, the forward thinking part and then your own situation. It's really mm. hard. And I think it is. And one of the things is, it's, it's that this is really important about and what, because what you're talking about, Leanne, is, is, the symptoms of structural racism, yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. because of the scarcity right. syndrome, right? One in, one out. Yeah. Meaning, mm -hmm. how many people are in businesses right now where there's only one black person in the business or one black person in the team? You will very, very rarely will you go into a business, even, even businesses who make their money off black people the sports where the, the you know the food places you know whoever it is mm. you will very rarely step into a business and go in and join a team and the team is 90 percent black these are the same businesses that claim they're not racist these are the same businesses that claim they don't have an issue with black people yeah. but yeah. you know and i actually recorded a video about this very thing before we did this because you know it's sitting on my spirit i needed to you know to get off it is because we're so conscious that as black people, there is not, there is never room for two of us. Never mind ten. There is never room for two of us, right? I know in one business that I was in, I had the most diverse team in the business, right? And you know, there was some very senior people who said that I was making an equal opportunity statement. So it's not enough that I can have different European, I can have black, brown, different, you know, different backgrounds, different eth different ethnicities. When I did do that, you know, and I, I was always very honest and said, that's my bias coming into play now because I'm thinking to myself, well, I want to build it. I want to be practicing what I preach. I don't want to be one of these HR people, do you know what I mean, that talks about diversity and inclusion. And when you look at their team, all you see is the same one shade and it ain't me. Or it's not it's not my brown brothers and sisters. Do you understand? And I was like, no, let me let the change start with me first. Mm. And I think that's one of these one of these things that you know for, for businesses to understand is you cannot claim that you are not racist. Leaders, you cannot claim that you are not racist when all of your conversations are around 
doing the right thing, which is the public thing, because you're going through diversity and inclusion. Exactly. Or you're preaching to your peers in other businesses about how you value diver and you and you're you're going off on diverse thought and diverse thinking. And you're taking your time because you're still thinking, well, I just need to understand how white supremacy works. I just need to understand how structural racism works. I just need to understand because I'm not understanding. But you can you can afford to sit in that comfort and that privilege. But yes. that the three of us are shit hot at what we do, right? If we apply for a job, they have three positions and all three of us tick every single box. Let me tell you from now, all three of us would not be hired. Please. Even though they had three positions available we would not be hired yeah. you know what I mean? Which, even, and even with doing all of all of this stuff that i do now and i've had some people that to use your phrase abby feel like i'm squash, freshly squeezed right and they and they've said to me oh my god shereen you know what it's so good thinking you know that you're doing all of this really good stuff considering your you know your background and you've just come out of nowhere and i'm going uh no no wait, wait excuse me excuse me let me just tell you, I've got two degrees, right? I've gone and played in the Houses of Parliament for my little five minutes, right? I can come and talk to you about artificial intelligence. I can oh. come and talk to you about... Read them. ...an exam-based certificate in finances or non-financial directors. <laughs> But you want to come because you see me rocking my hair unwashed or uncombed and you see me sitting candy <laughs> and you want to come think like I've just stepped off the first banana bone. Don't get it twisted. And this is what really annoys me is because, to your point, Leanne, we can't, as black people, we are not allowed to be. We can't drop it like it's hot in the nightclub and have degrees and have exactly. qualifications and exactly. have experience. And exactly. we, we cannot be all of those things, you know what I mean? Because they only want to see one aspect, and then they're not shocked. When I say one and I go, and I go, listen, don't look at me. Let me that. tell you, I got into um, I, my BA degree um, is uh, Russell Russell Group University, and in that racist company that I worked for, um, one of them said, "Did you did what did he say? He said something like, did you um, cheat to get in, or, oh. or you must come from a wealth? You must be one of those wealthy Africans because you must have paid your way to get in.' Oh. I couldn't believe that I got that got in on my merit really quickly. Sorry, I wanted to because as you both were talking, I was like, oh, I really want to get this. Point. <laughs> can, we, say it, can we? I know I'm going to be slightly controversial. No, do it. But, but uh, so, no afterwards, can I say something after you? Because I have to say something to Shireen's point uh, afterwards. Yeah, no, no, you go, 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 Leanne, you go first, go first. Because I know your controversy is going to take us off on a different tangent, so I know you have two seconds, I'm going to say this. Right, right. Oh my God. Right, right. Okay, okay, so this is my thing, this is my thing. So, it's already been proven that white males hire people that look like them, right? Yep, it's it's a proven fact white. that we've been, right, so they do that. So why is it then a problem if we do the same thing? This is oh. what I want to, people to look at. If I can do that as a white male and I hire people because they belong to me, whether it's because we went to the same business school, whether it's because we have the same color, but if I'm attracting people like by like, if the commonality plus the person has the right credentials, because before anyone tries to come for me to say, we're only hiring people on skin color, that's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about qualified people who can do the job, who look like me. And if I happen to find the best candidate repeatedly happens to have the same color as me, where's the problem? Because if, it's, if this is being done in all these companies and no one's complaining, exactly. why why is it a problem now? Because everyone's jumping on diversity bandwagon, exactly. but they're also jumping on gender diversity. That's not enough for me. Exactly. No, it's not, listen, and, and it's not even enough. And the point is as well, and you know, I, I made this point a few days ago about this um, proportional representation. It's, listen, because you know people know that I swear, so you know, put your headphones in. What the fuck is this about proportional representation if you're telling me that race does not matter? So if race does not matter, right? Mm -hmm. If race does not matter, why is it why do you feel like you have to put the hard stop line that says, as a business, we are gonna um we're gonna try and make our workforce to be representative of the yep. communities that we serve right so because what i say to people is if that's the case right 
all of these London businesses, because you know I worked in a few, and you know I that's like London, my little stomping ground, yeah? London, how much percentage is London of ethnic minorities? But step me into a business when you see the same representation out in the streets as you see in the office, but that's okay. So the, and because we're talking about all of this black stuff now, they're going, well, you know, it's got to be proportional, it's got to be proportional. And what some people have said, when I say some people, let me just be clear. Chief executive officers, non-executive directors, chief people officers, chief technology officers, people chief marketing officers. officers. Yeah, all the, all, 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 all the C-suite people then, right? All of the C-suite people then. And they're the same ones that say, they're the same ones that say, well, do you know what? What everyone has to understand is we live in a white society. Now, I'm just going to make this point because this is not about who's born here, but let's just be crystal clear. I was born here. Leanne, you were born here. Do you I understand what I'm saying? You, listen, you own Lagos, loud and proud, baby. You own it loud and proud. I right? always say Lagos born, London. Yeah, right. that, that, listen, but the point is, so if clear, that argument is paid, we are still second because of the colour of our skin. That's what they don't understand. When you make that argument and you say we're living in a white society, what you're saying is white supersedes everything because exactly. as, a, as a white person and a black person who are yes. both born in the UK yes. Yes. what you're saying is the white people because society is white still that's why I'm going make it make sense because what you're telling me does not make any sense and they're committing this mm -hmm. to emails because I see the screenshots do you know what I mean you know I keep saying I've got people whispering in my ear and this is why I'm saying to people like if this is still the prevailing thought then we haven't been talking hard enough and deep enough about race because this is the fundamental thing that will stop black people from progressing. Because let me tell you something, when these businesses get to the 10% or the 15% quota of black or brown or other, yeah. mm -hmm. there is no room for anybody else. There is no room for anybody else to, to help me make that. I, I don't understand. Yeah. I don't understand that argument. Agree. Because there is no argument behind it. That's why, because make it make sense, as you said. Make it make sense. Because they don't make sense. That argument does not make sense to me. Because because for all those years, they've been happy to have businesses that are one hundred percent white and not reflective of the communities they serve. So why exactly. is that okay? Exactly. What, that's what I don't understand. Why is that okay? I feel like we're. I feel like, that's, I feel like that's one we can dissect for another another oh. hour. We're gonna do it. We're gonna, Abby, we're gonna do it. Abby, I want you to drop these fucks point. amongst the yeah, hens now. Sorry. All right. Drop yeah, it. Drop it. Drop it. Hey, let me just get a little bit of water. Yeah, I'm getting my water. Because I'm me about too. to. I'm going to be controversial. There's no such thing. This, so, I have to say this, so black, <laughs> black women listening in, this is just, this is one for all of us. Can we talk about black people in the workplace who are so playing, excuse my language, playing house Negro, that when they come across another black person, they want to be so up the the the. the <laughs> like, no, I can't. You two need to stop shifting. Stop it. Because I have come across black women in the workplace. I, I, black black people, but let's go with black women because um, you know I, I have more more examples. Black women in the workplace who want to be blockers to other black people because they want to be seen as that yes master, no master, three cotton bags master. Um, and then when another black person comes in, because they want to be in so much favor with all of the white C-suite levels and the leadership team, they're out there ruining and gaslighting fellow black people. And then what happens is when you do come across racism or microaggression or racial gaslighting, and then you you flag it, they're like, yeah, but but Sandra doesn't mind. We say that all around Sandra all the time. And then, you know, because they will use that fellow black person in the organization stage show saying, well, Abby, you know, you're just a troublemaker because we've been having these jokes with Sandra for years. And then now you're and now you're coming and then you're saying it's not it's not appropriate. Why do some black people feel the need to behave like this? Because because they want to be in favor with with the white people in the organization. It's so can I talk? damaging. Can I talk? 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 Can I <laughs> Listen, I was late. I'm waiting. I'm waiting patiently. I'm letting you go. I'm coming after Le it. Le Leanne, you will have your turn. You will have your turn. So this is this is what happens, right? Because you you absolutely said you hit the nail on the head, right? And and, and I know there's gonna be some white people listening to your talk. Sorry, you know? the comments, the comments, coconut coonery. Adrian, Adrian, you've killed me. I'm dying. Adrian. I am dying. I'm like 
Adrian, like, listen. We're going to come, listen, I promise. Oh, no. We will come, we will come to the comments. We, we, we're doing so good time. We're going to come to the comments. But what I'm going to say is this is, and this is where I know there are, there are going to be some white or non-black people listening to this and going, did they, are they really using terms like white slave, white Negro, um, yep. you know, uh, head slave, house uh, head Negro, 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 house yes. Negro. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Like, you can't use it, but we can use it. Yeah, we can. First off, we can use it, you can't use it. But because this is what happens, right, when as black people, we are indoctrined into this world. Because again, I'll go back to my point about scarcity. And it's mm. for the same reason, the same reason why there are still many very influential black people within the world of business who have got nothing to say about this subject. Because they know if they do, they are threatening their status as being one of the in-group. And the in-group is the ones that have to shed that layer of blackness mm -hmm. to get ahead. Because they're trying, they've, 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 they've grown their career having to leave parts of their black identity behind because they so do not want to be seen as the black person. And listen, you listen, we all know it. In the office environment, when you're talking about, you know, so-and-so who is in marketing, right? There's a difference between so-and-so who's in marketing versus, oh, you know, the black woman in HR. So the, the color of our skin is always attached to who we are. How many white people, when they're trying to describe a person straight off the bat, straight off the bat, they're, they're, they're just they're, they're talking about it's the man the woman and they start going you know like you know they wear converse trainers and you know that's the conversation where they're talking about another white person but the second they know it's a black person or a brown person or you know somebody with a turban or not it's 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 the color of their skin it's the race it's their identity yeah, it's, it's the media exactly that is, yeah, it's that, media. That, is, that is attached but when you go back to this thing about being black in the workplace is you know fundamentally those individuals are thinking, I don't want to bite the hand that feeds me. And that's why, you, you know, when I say to people, like, please tell me what is different, this world that we're living in now, compared to the 80, you know, when, when slavery was rife, okay, apart from the clothes that we wear, the music that we listen to in the houses that we live in, because we are still having, to, we're still being pitted against each other. And that just like in the slavery, there were the good slaves, the house slaves that made it from the field to the courtyard, to the, to the master house, but they could only stay in the master house provided they disassociated with the rest of the fields, who the rest of the slaves who were still picking cotton in the field, right? And this plays out in the corporate space because when they do bring in the, you know, the one black person or, you know, whatever else it is, and if that black person doesn't mess up, if that black person doesn't, um you know, work out and they leave, everyone's looking at this black person and going, well, they're your people. Do you know what I mean? You said right. you, you know, we, we we trusted your judgment on that, and now they didn't work out. And listen, I still deal with and hear people to this day. You know, you talking about three years ago, Abby. I'm talking about present day when yep. they got issues yep. with their black employees, yep. right? And and I'm thinking to myself, this is, and they're saying it's not a color thing, it's not a color thing. But you know what? You know what lets them down when they say that because when they then say, when you see all the stuff I've done around diversity inclusion, when you see all the stuff I've done around BAME, and I'm thinking to myself, pardon. So when your white direct report doesn't work out, you ain't running off and telling me how you're you're you're, you're going down to the white ghetto. I don't even know if that exists, but you know what I mean. And you're helping out and you're handing out bread to the poor. What do you take this thing for? Yeah. Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying to you? I just, I just want to say two things to your point. Shane. No, go go. You go do. Um, and and the the first thing that I wanted to say was this one's a little bit comical, but do you remember ages and ages ago, three non blondes, the comedian, and yeah. there was that black woman, and she was like, I don't want anybody to, no, no, no one in the office knows I'm white. And yeah, as soon yeah. as they played like a bit of music, then she was like, mm, mm, mm. but in in the mm. office, it was like, yes, I'm I'm prim and proper, and I. <laughs> it's it's all those things that. You know, when you go into the office, there's always a code of conduct. What's deemed professional? What's deemed professional dress from be you know, large hoop earrings, depending on the company, you know, large hoop earrings, tight clothes, too tight, da 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 da, da, da all these different things. And I feel like, as you said, because the standards of what's professional, and I'm going to put afros, you know, hair also being part of this, whether it's braids, afro, whatever, something that's not straight. Um, not something that's the, not the European. The European standards of beauty. Right. 
yeah. Europeans, right. So yeah. it's like the code of conduct is created by non-black people, meaning in order for us to be accepted into the workplace, we then have to conform. And as you both said, it's the house Negro who conforms the most who gets ahead. And that's where you ask yourself, is my identity worth it? Because, you know, they always say to get to be successful at some level, you have to sell out, sell out to the business. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, you have to sell, I mean, sell your soul. And I think yeah, for some yeah. black people, Selling your soul is selling your black identity to say, well, do you know something? I am colorless. When people see me, when I'm doing my job white, I mean, right, sorry, that I read the word white. Oops, it was a problem. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm doing my job right, um, no one notices my color. It's only when you cause problems. So when, Abby, you come in the office now and you're saying, Hey, 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 this isn't acceptable. This woman's going, oh, wow. Well, here's this, this rambunctious Negro. Oh, yes, the uppity slave. No, 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 no. no. And you're like, mm -mm 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 -mm. and then we destabilize their position because then they're denying their own identity. They're denying their own authenticity. And then they have burnout and they don't know why. And it's like, oh, it's the stress of the job. No, it's not the stress of the job. It's you suppressing your real identity in order to maintain the job exactly yeah. and what i just want to say as well because you know before some people get get carried away so you know like the same people that when you talk about slavery and they want to start going yeah but wasn't it you africans that started selling each selling each other first i just want to make this point clear right when we are talking about the the house negro or the house slave and i know there's some people like, oh my god i can't believe it <laughs> i can't believe it's rolling off their tongue in this way but didn't listen this is how we talk right do you know what i don't even wrong them because they are a product of the system they're a product of the system, right? So this, before anyone gets carried away and thinking, oh my God, where, because now everyone's thinking, oh my God, I know I know that one black person that acts like that, da, 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 da. We're not attacking them. We're using no. this to illustrate the symptoms of structural racism. We're using this to illustrate what it is to live in a white supremacist society within the world of work and how that manifests itself in terms of our behavior and how we show up in the world of work. So I just want to make that crystal clear because you know how I feel about don't get it twisted and don't twist up what we're saying to use yeah. it as an example. Abby, Leanne and Shireen said, you know what, you black people, you're just your own worst enemies. That's not what we're saying. We're using <laughs> and no, and you laughing at me because you don't know it's true. You no, don't know that's coming. No, yeah, also and, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna add on top. They'll clip that one bit yeah. and then just go oh, listen. And I'm going to add one more thing, just so that everyone's clear. This whole part talking about the system of white supremacy isn't saying that all white people are wrong. We're not anti-white. We're not. We're anti-systemic racism. That's what we're anti. And we are pro-awareness. And we are pro-change. And we are pro-mobilization. Meaning, these conversations are here to to heighten the awareness of all of those who may not know. But after today, you can't say you didn't know. Exactly. Listen, you know, I don't accept to, ignorance. I don't sorry, accept ignorance absolutely. in 2020. And just to go back on to on Leanne's, um, what Leanne just said now, I'm going to say something else to make abundantly clear. Abundantly clear. Because we are pro-black, that does not mean we are anti-white. The difference Say it again. Is, say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Are, because I feel, I feel like some people can't hear you. Because we are pro-black doesn't mean we are anti-white. The difference being, the difference being, when people are pro-white, it normally means they are anti-black. Please understand the difference. And honestly, everyone, for everyone listening, I'm going to be insufferable by in come um, September because of my master's. I'm going to go and study my master's, which is going to be in race and social justice. So I'm going to be talking about colonization and I'm going to be talking about, you know, racial theories and I'm going to be schooling people. I need to say it one more time. Because we are pro-black, that doesn't mean we are anti-white. And I think that's what people need to understand. That's why people cannot understand the Black Lives Movement and why, why it is there, why it is so important, you know? And I think people just automatically think, oh my God, oh my God, you know, blah, blah, blah. no, listen to what we are saying. That we're talking about hundreds of years of systemic oppression, and that's why I can't stand bullshit things like unconscious bias training. You cannot train away one hour. You cannot train away, you know, I'm 34 years old, 34 years, 50 years, 75 years. 
90 years, you cannot train away that kind of bias in a one hour tick box exercise, which is why I don't do them for people because it's a waste Correct. of my time and it's a waste Correct. of people's right. time. Right. Right. Listen, and this, is, and this is what also, this is what people have to be crystal clear in this is because I know once all the hype is, 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 is worn off, there's going to be some people reflecting on this conversation and thinking, Jesus Christ, I don't think I'm ready to listen to this part too, right? I don't think I'm ready to listen because, listen, i got I got people lined up. <laughs> you know, they're not, they're not ready. And what I'm saying is this is the sort of conversation that we need to be having if we're gonna, if we're going to move forward. If you're in a business, right, and you are not having this level of conversation, all of these phrases that you're hearing, all of these examples that we're giving you, if nobody is bringing you those to the table, you have not bottomed out in terms of your race issues in your business, because this is what the conversation needs to look and feel like so you see that diversity and inclusion trainer person over there who wants to come and offer you a nice little package and for you to come sit on some uh, e-learning course just like abby said you cannot you cannot eradicate this in an hour you cannot eradicate there's, there's, there's many things you know and we're not going to get into all the different things you can do but what i'm just saying to people is like i know there are some people who are glossing over this because they don't want to have this right? Whether they're black, white, whoever, they don't want to have this conversation. They don't know how to navigate that conversation because they're so worried about making sure they get paid. They're so worried about making sure that the corporate brings them into the next thing. With what I do, that's not my concern. My concern is, <laughs> I always keep saying to people, is to keep hitting people over the head, yeah, and keep annoying people in my timeline. But also, I do not want you to unsee me because for 17 years, I've felt invisible, do you understand what I'm nice. saying? For 17 nice. years, I felt like I have got every single qualification to stand me ahead of my peers, of, <laughs> you know, people. And then I have left businesses and they have promoted people or brought people oh, in who, who, who look strange. the opposite to me and who've got half the experience, who don't even have the qualifications, but because the senior leadership team took a shine to them and they thought, do you know what? This person is easier to handle because Shireen is yes. too challenging. And yes. the, the worst thing, the worst thing is they haven't even seen half of my personality because for years I like kept it, I kept it under lockdown. Only certain people know my level of my extraness. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Like my team that used to, they know how extra I am. I'm proper, I'm extra to the, you know. But, but and, and that's the thing when I just go, what people have to understand is that is real experiences and it's that lived experience. I'm not saying you need 100% the lived experience to affect change, yeah. but you have to understand what that looks like in your business yeah. if you were going to go and make change. Because if you don't, honestly, you're going to do more damage and you might as well not bother. Don't bother. Don't yeah. bother. And no, I, I ain't going to give you no recommend recommendations. I, I'm not I doing will, that for you either. I will say as well, before anything, yes, I know obviously off the back of George Floyd's murder, Breonna Taylor being murdered, and you know, the world is now waking up to, to what we've already been going through. Everybody, please listen and listen clearly. And I'm going to speak for, my, for myself, Shireen and Leanne. Before you slide in our DMs, please make sure you have money. We're not going to give our... Hold on one second. I'm sick and tired of people sliding into my DMs asking for free training and free... Oh. I'm not... You're, oh. Pay black women our worth. I'm not doing this with you guys. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be doing training for free. You think I'm going to sit down and have coffees? And I'm, I don't want any more virtual coffees. I'm done. I don't want any more. I don't want I don't want Don't. No, don't. A lot of people right now, you know, you know, all jokes aside, I've had a lot of people approach me, you know, asking for calls and asking for quick chats. But, you know, actually what you want is help. And actually that help, requires some you know some of, some some, some queen no, but, but let's queen but, but let's also be but also be clear um abby is that all these companies are doing it to both their bottom line yeah. whichever way we want to turn it around it's to bolster their bottom line so if you're bolstering your bottom line then you need to pay for that because let me tell you, when you're calling in McKinsey, BCG, Bain and whatever else and they're charging they got, 500 but, but pounds they got money an hour then. But, they got, but they got money right. then Right. But they got and then. right, right, right. Because everybody. And, 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 can I just say one more thing, Leanne? What, can I just say one more thing? Because you know I'm extra. I've got to make this point clear. 
Leanne, me nor Abby, we do not need to go on your platform to raise our profile. <laughs> don't, so, so don't, don't, don't slide into my DMs telling me how me being on your podcast, you're this, you're this, you're this, you're this, is going to help me, Ooh. right? Ooh. I've got no problem. All I'm saying to people is call a spade a spade. But don't be playing that game because I am not the grateful Negro, yeah. right? I'm not yeah. the grateful woman that's just going to go, oh, my God, because guess what I've been doing? I've been building my own goddamn platform so I can go and talk about whatever I want. And whoever wants to listen can listen. So yeah. we don't need... The, if you need our help and you want our voice, like 110%. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? All Absolutely. jokes aside, 110%. Okay, but please weekend. stop using... Yes. The excuse of brand profile and rate and exposure and all of this, that we have to be grateful to come into your big business when you've got budget exactly. and money. Can I just say, again, um, I'm sure, you know, the person might be watching, they might not. But <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> you don't care. Point, but actually, right now, I don't care because I'm a little bit annoyed. I have had, not going to name a name, four major brands. I mean, talking about global brands slide into my DMs and ask me to lend, you know, that and ask me to lend my expertise with them. Can I just say the reason why I'm pissed off is because I applied for those roles. I applied oh. for those roles. I applied for those, you know. Oh, um, we weren't good you know, enough, Abby. We I were not good talent, enough. Head of talent acquisition roles, director roles for head of talent, and I didn't get the role. And the person who picked me to the damn post is now sliding in my DMs asking for help on DNI or asking for help to how to recruit See. diversely. It's, are you kidding me? Because you guys told me I wasn't worth it, that I wasn't good enough. But here you are in my damn DM saying, please, Abby, come and help us. And you want me to do it for free. Don't be silly. No. <laughs> make it make sense. Do not come onto my don't come onto my LinkedIn and embarrass yourself. And you know, I'm at the point now, and I'm at the point now. I used to be very apologetic. Yeah, for my work because I've all I've heard over since I graduated for the last 13 years is how much we should just be happy that we've got a job. We should be happy as black people that you know we're putting food on the table. I'm not doing that, and I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not going to say yes. You know, I'm not. I'm not asking for a seat at your table. I pulled up my own damn seat, and I've made my own damn table. Right? This is my table. So you're now in. You're now in my palace. So if you want to come to me, come correct. Yeah. If you want right. to understand, yeah. right. yes. but understand. As, you both, as you both said, don't also for these companies that are sitting there thinking, well, hey, do you know something? You know what? We've got we've got a black woman in accounting. Don't also go and try and make her responsible for this. It's not her in accounting. And also, not all black people are made equal. And when I say that, don't just think because you have a black person that they can solve your problem. Mm -hmm. Be to pay for expertise. You would not go and get a dentist to go and try and fix your car. Can you, Leanne, can you just say that one more time? Because I feel like no, people no, just need to no, no, yeah, no, I, no, I, no, I think no, like, I think people, one more time. <laughs> Rewind, come <laughs> again. <laughs> you would not get a dentist to come and fix your car. So get the right black person, not just any black person to try and solve your problem. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, I'm going to, because I'm. you know how I like to just do that one minute, one hour and 20 minutes. And so I'm just going to try. And if anyone's got any comments, you literally have like a minute. So you better type quick. So if we you want to have a comment or you want to ask us a question. Okay, hold on. Oh, I like this one. So I just I just had to show this one because I did see this one before. Yep. Can we read, can we read, can we read. Their fear it will become them absolutely it, and it is listen yeah. it, 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 there's so much stuff and don't worry like i'm here every week until like linkedin kick me off basically so don't worry we've got there is so <laughs> LinkedIn are like, oh, LinkedIn are like, this is this is too hot for me this is too hot, this is too hot. <laughs> we, can share, we share um um for everybody listening can we share um um social media handles because i realized that i know that because loads of people sending me messages saying what where are you on social on my social media handles, it's A O Adamson. That's for my Twitter and for my Instagram. So A O Adamson. If you want to follow me, just tag me or something and then I'll follow you back. So Yes, go, 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 go connect with Leanne. Leanne Mai, you, well, you, you got me to so go and send listen for this. You don't even need to send us some nice little message. Just go and connect and we can, you know, and we can we can we can do all of that. So absolutely. Um and then the other 
I just want to see. Let me see now. Can, Hold on. Can we oh, just can we get Joan Johnson's one up there, please? Can we get can we get Joan's one up because we want to talk about. I that. can't find it. Where's that? Did you, what was it? It's down the bottom. Down the bottom. That's a that's a good one, Joan. Yeah, that's a good just one. Just bame title. Let me tell title. you how much I hate that damn thing. We are. I'm not bame. My race isn't bame. I'm not bame. Mine neither. Yes, and that's what people. It's it's just an easy way for them to not say black, basically. And can I just say, <laughs> skin folk doesn't mean kin folk. <laughs> Let me say it again. Skin folk doesn't mean kin folk. Right. There is a lot right. of racism amongst other ethnic minorities towards black people, which is why we don't like the term bane. Bane, because it, 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 no, it implies that it's all solidarity. This, and that's what, that, to be fair, I think this thing about bane, I'm actually going to pause it there because I actually think we need to... So just to let everybody know, these are some of the subjects that we're going to talk about next time around. We've got colorism. Yes, we're yes, going to talk colorism, about super all the different different shades of black. We'll talk about bane. We've got, we've got bane. bane. Um, listen, we've got so much stuff. I've got um, next week, just to say really quickly, I've got um, a retired military officer from, um, I think she's like the US Air Force. I think it's the Air Force. Forgive me, Margie, I've forgotten. But Margie is going to come and she's going to talk next week. And we're just going to talk about the, this idea of understanding that there's so much work that needs to be done in this space. Some of it can be public, but all a lot of it's going to be behind the scenes. And we we'll just have this idea about what people can do to help affect change. That's going to be super cool. But we will keep talking about all of these issues. Like, you know, you've seen the kind of level of fire that we are on. Um, and it was one of the things that I really wanted to do, which is why like I begged LinkedIn to give me my live license, which they did. It's why I don't, because people keep saying to me, you know, why don't you do Zoom? Um, webinars and whatever and the reason is is because I want accessibility I don't want anyone to have to register to come and listen to this yeah. conversation yeah. I don't want any I don't want to put any barriers to anybody to come and listen to this conversation I want people to learn I want people to be challenged I also want black people to feel supported and validated by the definition of us having this conversation in yeah. this kind of real honest phase. I also want non-black supporters to feel supported, that they know that the steps that they're taking, the things that they're trying to influence in their businesses, in their teams, in their communities is so important because of all the issues that we've just talked about today. So I just want to make that, you know, that point really, really clear. Um, you know, so, so people are kind of thinking, oh my God. So we will come back for a part two about colorism, about BAME, mm -hmm, sure. even about, you know, people of color, um, um, all these terminologies. We, I think we, we're going to do another session to just to break down some terminology for people. And um, I think, I think people do, colorism is a massive, massive problem within the black, commu the black mm -hmm. community. Um, and I think, you know, so that people can understand and not just black people, but people of all, you know, racial backgrounds and minorities, whatever, need to understand how colorism is so damaging. Um, because when you do look sometimes at a leadership board and you see a light skinned woman in their leadership, they're like, well, we've already got a black person. And it's not the same. So we need yeah. to we need to have this. Well, yes, well, we will talk about quotas. So I want to talk about quotas as well, yeah. positive discrimination. Like there is so much stuff, but I guess, you know, now you know what you're getting. Can I just can I just, can I just say one more thing though? Just just to say this out there loud and proud. For all the people who are using this as an opportunity purely to make money and say, you know, yeah, this is my, this is my moment. It's not just about being your moment. This has to be something that you genuinely feel. This isn't about you advertising your business. This isn't about you saying I've been ignored, you know, all these years and now my business idea is finally going to jump off. It's not about that. It's about really affecting change. It's about making changes that we might not see, but it's making yeah. changes for the rest the other generations so that, you know what, today it might mean that in my office, in Abby's office, in Shireen's office, we might be the one and only, but it might mean that when our daughters go to work, they might be one of five, you know, right. we have to, you know, I've seen a lot of posts on LinkedIn that's all about the money, the money, now we're going to get paid and dollar signs and blah, blah, blah. You know, this isn't what it's about. It's about yes, really Laura. making change. This is, you know, yeah. making money is a byproduct, but it isn't the motivation. And for anyone whose motivation it is, you're on the wrong shit. Jump off now. Jump off. Because it's going to take off. real work. Yes. So jump off now. Mission, mission. But you know, like Margie, my friend Margie in the states, and she's watching. Hey, Margie, she's going to be on this week. You know, she said, "Mission before self. Mission before self." I am not saying 
We are not saying that you can't go and secure the bag, that you can't go. But what I'm saying secure is this the bag. Is secure. Listen, in fact, we doubly All say day, secure every day. the bag. And, 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 and if you're listening to this and you're black, go double your prices. Hello. Double your go prices. Double yeah, your prices. Secure the damn bag. Just make sure you're not throwing our fellow black people under the bus to get there. That's what we're saying. Secure your bag. Get right. your money. Get your monies up, yeah. But make right. sure you're being mindful to the lived experiences of fellow black people. Because I've had black women not go through the same things that I've gone through. That doesn't mean that I'm not going through it. So secure your right. bag and do it the right way. Be kind yeah. to everyone. Be kind, Be kind to everyone. Be kind to everybody and I think there's a, you know and that's a good point because I know there's going to be a lot of people listening to this thinking oh my god like I didn't know white people are so terrible clearly it's not all white people but, but of course not but we are living in a white supremacist society we do turn on the television to see only one black face in an advert one black face in a tv show one black presenter we do live in a world where you can you can have most of a football team be black Right, but the people that manage in the people that make the big money are white, and they still get racist chants when they turn up on the pitch from an all white crowd. We still live in a space where we step into our businesses and we do not see people that look like us, with the exception of the receptionist, the cleaner, or the security guard. So, all I want to say to people is this is where you need to focus your energy structural racism and change, not the statues the cereal boxes, the Black Lives Matter, the movement, the US peace, the all you know, what the Daily Mail says, what all the what all the comments says in the Daily Mail, because we don't know how that one works already. That is not what is going to help us affect change. And for anyone who thinks that our honesty is divisive and polarizing, then all I'm going to say is you need to do more work because I'm not talking to you. Yeah. And one um, more thing I'm just to your point, Shireen just to say, um, just to clarify this as well, once again, about white supremacy and versus white supremacist. A white supremacist, you know, as we see, is usually, you know, extreme right KKK style. White supremacy in the way we're talking about it is a system that basically means it's rigged for our disadvantage. That's and that's people I mean. are sometimes, and I think that's why people are sometimes getting caught up with us being anti-white when we're not. We're not saying that everybody wants to kill black people. We're saying that the system is rigged in yeah. our disadvantage. It doesn't help us. It doesn't enable us. It actually yeah. disables us. Because, you know, people take things away. And as you said, Shireen, there'll be snippets, 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 but you need to hear the whole context which is the system well, so I think, yeah, exactly. I think yeah. the next I think the next show we do will definitely go into that in more depth. We're gonna be talking yes, we're gonna talk about intersectionality because you know there are layers to this. There are layers we need to talk about social class. We need to talk there's class. so many there's so many we things. Talk, we need so many Leanne, Shireen and myself, we will be back for more. Um we will we you will. Will. haven't connected with myself and Leanne, I know you're all connected with Shireen. Connect with us, we're all on this learning we're learning. Here. learning. Let's yeah, send me LinkedIn voice notes. I love a LinkedIn voice note. You'll always get a reply if you send me a voice note. I live yeah. for a voice note. So, so you know, send us a voice note. And then I'm just going to play us out. Big up, big up. All of the women, big up, big up. All of the girls, big up, big up. All of the women, big up, big up. Big up, big up. Big up, big up. This makes. This is not saying I look like I've got no rhythm. I look like I've got no rhythm. Can you know, say you're sexy? <laughs> Green, <you're mad. laughs> Listen, I told you I was extra. This is my life. This is my life. I've got one big speaker in my living room because you know me, my partner, we love a sound system. We love a sound system. <laughs> it's 31 degrees here in Munich. I'm dying. I don't have time. My makeup's going to melt. Okay. All right, guys. Well, listen, thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you, everybody. Um,
this this the, there is replay so you can see this on my profile anytime i will um download the recording put it on my youtube channel i'll share it tomorrow leanne and abby will share the links for anybody who misses it i'm not even going to cut anything i'm just going to download it and let them see the whole <laughs> let, them, let everybody see the whole let everybody see the whole team <laughs> It's, thank it's you, great. everyone. Thank you so thank much you. for tuning in. Thank, thank you for your you. amazing great. comments. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your patience. Um, we know we're us three are batshit crazy, and we're just really we're grateful. Crazy. And you know, I hope you guys tune in for part two, where we will be talking about colorism and intersectionality and BAME, and we've got so much more to discuss. Oh, you know. As we said, we're talking about years and years and years of systems. We're trying to break down systems that have been built over, you know, hundreds of years. So that's going to take more than a, an hour and a half for us to, for us to yeah. do. So, yeah. yeah, thank you. All right. Love you both. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Bye.